Hey everybody, Alice here. Today we're doing a wine tasting right here from the comfort of my living room because this video today is actually sponsored by Illicit Wine Projects. And we're gonna be pairing six of their wines with the perfect fall destination for each one. Now, Illicit Wine Project is a customizable ship to home wine program where you can pick and choose how many bottles you want. And it's actually really affordable. So you're getting great wines. They are from the US and they come from a bunch of different varietals. So you're gonna be sure to get the wine that you want. And I'm really excited to kind of transport us around the world in a global wine tasting. So grab your glass and let's get to exploring. Rosé all day. Chefs say that rosé actually pairs with anything and there's no bad time to drink a rosé. So that's exactly what we're starting with today. And this rosé is actually called Murph. It's kind of like a, a nickname for the actual guy that owns this vineyard, whose name is David Murfield. It's made in the Columbia Valley in Washington. Oh my gosh, that's, that's so delicious. I'm not usually a huge fan of rosé, but this one is like really fruity. There's like taste of peach, kiwi, mango, and grapefruit. And this wine actually comes from Rhone varietal grapes, which come from France, obviously. But I think the thing that I taste the most is actually the white peach. And fun fact about peaches, more than 50% of the peaches in the US are actually grown in California. So this first fall destination is going to be Central California where we're gonna be heading to the Eastern Sierras. Now in the Eastern Sierras, fall turns the birch and aspen trees gold and yellow and the cooler temperatures make for the perfect hiking, backpacking, and even rock climbing experiences. You can spend a night in Mammoth or Lone Pine and set off into the forest to hike to Glacial Lakes, Hot Springs, and even Yosemite National Park and the curious looking Mono Lake. I have spent so much time in this area and I absolutely love it. And this is just the perfect wine for it. All right, next up is this fruit and flower Chardonnay. Now, like Rosé, I'm not a huge Chardonnay fan, but I'm excited to see what this one tastes like because I usually love fruity Chardonnays, not dry ones. That's exactly what this one looks like. It's got pears and apples on the front, so. Mm. Oh, wow. I was absolutely not expecting that. I don't know if you guys drink Chardonnay, but normally it's really dry and pretty oaky. This one is just like full of fruit. I can absolutely taste the apple and the pear and the fruitiness of this wine. Really, really good, which makes me think of the perfect fall destination for this one as going to Washington State where they actually grow an enormous amount of apples. There are a ton of organic farms throughout Washington State. You can start in Olympia and head north. There's also more in the Spokane Valley. And if you've never gone apple picking either with friends or family, well, I highly recommend it. So head on up to Washington, get yourself a basket of delicious apples, and then it's time to hit the kitchen for a slurry of pies, tarts, ciders, and even applesauce. So many great things you can make from picking your own apples at one of these orchards. And it's a super fantastic fall getaway. So if you've got apple orchards near you, I highly recommend you heading out and bringing this wine, fruit, and flower with you. All right, we're moving on to our last white. And this one is a Sauvignon Blanc. It's called Liquid Light. Now, Sauvignon Blanc is one of my favorite white wines. This one is actually also made in Washington State. And the awesome thing about this wine is that it's only 105 calories and has one gram of sugar, which is like unheard of for a white wine. So let's give it a taste. I need to work on my swirl. Ooh, ooh. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just love the like little bit of tartness in the Sauvignon Blanc. This one you can really taste like the lime. There's notes of green pineapple. Oh, so delicious. This reminds me of Southern Brazil, which is actually where they grow green pineapple. So that's how we're heading for our third fall destination. Now our fall here in the US is actually the Brazilian spring. 
So a trip down to Sao Paulo at this time of year is full of blooming trees. We could take a few days to explore the city and then let's go to Iguazo Falls, one of the world's largest waterfalls. And then let's do some deep exploring of some of the rainforests in Southern Brazil and some of the other wildlands where I think we're gonna see a lot of animals and there is lots of other really great activities to be had. We still have three more wines and three more great fall destinations. I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about Illicit Wine Project and what it means if you subscribe or you check it out. So you can basically purchase anything from one bottle to 12 bottles, which is a case. Um, you could even get more than that if you wanted to. Um, if you become a subscriber and order more than four bottles at a time, you actually get a big discount. And if you order a case of wine at a time, you actually get 15% off, which is really awesome. You can actually find out more information on Illicit Wine Project and how to order at the link down below in the description. And if you love wine, I would love for you to leave a comment right now. Tell me your favorite wine or your favorite wine region, the favorite wine region that you wanna visit next. And oh, don't forget to subscribe too. Who's ready for a nice glass of red wine? Now, red wine is kind of my go-to when I just want a nice glass with dinner. I usually drink white on like a hot summer <laughs> night. But we're gonna start today with this altered dimension. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon. And I just really love the bottle because it reminds me of zebras, which makes me think about Tanzania. <laughs> and, you know, safariing through the Serengeti and the endless plains there. And in perfect Serengeti-esque timing, I have brought a cat bottle opener. Still working on that swirl, guys. Still working on the swirl. Oh my gosh, wow, it's so good really earthy it's got like some chocolate taste in there and I actually read the notes on this one it said it actually has Marion berry which is very similar to the blackberry but it grows in Oregon and actually where I grew up in New Hampshire we had a ton of blackberries so I really love that like rich earthy fruit taste it's not so much like overly sugarly sugary but just like a really dark, rich, fruity taste, so I really love that. And because the Marion Berry is actually grown in Oregon, that's where we're gonna be heading on our first red wine fall destination. Oregon in the fall is heavenly. Peak fall foliage season is best enjoyed by hiking in the Cascades, picking pumpkins in the central part of the state, cycling through the Willamette Valley where they make wine and touring the rugged Oregon coastline. I haven't been to Oregon in a long time, but one of my first trips there was actually for a wedding where I did a lot of wine tasting in Oregon. And I must say it is absolutely beautiful. Okay, we're switching it up and going to this intrinsic red blend from the Columbia Valley. And just look how cool this wine bottle is. It's so pretty. I love the lady with her like rosy, beautiful outfit. And this is actually a blend, I'm just gonna read it to you, of Cab Franc, Malbec, and it's layered to create a silky refined overtone. Ooh. And a street artist actually made this label, so that's pretty cool. So let's try it. Ah, bellissimo. Ooh, I'm getting better at the swirl. Oh wow, this is so different than the last wine. Wow, that is so good. It's really actually growing on me every sip that I take. This has a lot of like really rich flavors. It's got fig, it's got like a little bit dark chocolate, it's got some licorice in there. And licorice actually reminds me of Sweden because the Swedes absolutely love licorice. I went to Sweden last year for the first time and black licorice, I'm one of those rare people, I guess that absolutely loves black licorice. So this wine is really delicious. And since we're going to Sweden for this fall destination, here are some of the things you can expect there and some of the things that you should do. We're gonna fly into Stockholm for a few days, explore Old Town. We're gonna eat licorice, of course, tour museums. And then we're heading up to Abisko National Park, which is located in Lapland. 
Now, it has unbelievable waterfalls and the fall colors here are amazing. Now, they're gonna peak a few months before American autumn, but it is absolutely gorgeous, all the forest land. And when winter comes around November and December, you're gonna be able to see the Northern Lights. And one of the other things you can see in this park is Scandinavia's largest lake. Last but not least is this one. It's called Born on Fire. And this is their Cabernet Sauvignon. And <laughs> the title just makes me think of Katniss Everdeen in Hunger Games. But this isn't a video about famous movie locations. So one of the really cool things about this wine from the Columbia Valley is that it is actually from an area that burned from wildfires and the vineyards were actually replanted. And these are new varietals of grapes that were replanted in this area that was burned from fire. So hence the name Born of Fire. This is one of those areas that we're seeing, of course, now a lot on the news that are just getting decimated by wildfire. So really awesome to see a wine that has come back from one of these regions really hard hit from that. But let's taste it. So this is a Cab Sauv just like that first red wine that we taste, but it's so different. It's really rich in like cherry and herbal flavors, but it's not super bold. It's not super heavy. It's, it's kind of like a medium bodied, really, really tasty. But that black cherry taste that I taste in there really reminds me of a region of the Eastern seaboard in the United States, the Adirondacks, which is fabulous for fall so many beautiful places to visit to hike there the fall colors are unbelievable quite possibly the best place to go in the u.s for fall leaf peeping i recommend setting out on a road trip and hitting the towns of lake placid saranac lake and ticonderoga and to get a glimpse of some of the best foliage you will want to hike to titus mountain and high falls gorge well that was our sixth wine and our sixth fall destination. I hope you guys enjoyed this virtual global wine tasting tour with me and I would love to hear what you guys thought about not only illicit wines and these different wines that I tasted but about these fall destinations that we could go to as well. You know everywhere around the world there are so many places to explore and I'm really glad that you guys came along with me. If you want to check out illicit wines again the link is down below in the description let me know in the comments if you're trying out Illicit and also what your favorite wine from today was, what your favorite destination was. And don't forget to share this video with your favorite wine lovers, subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon on another adventure. And until then, make sure you watch one of these other videos on my channel. Cheers.